Trader Joe's is a chain of grocery stores that opened in 1967. Thank you for your suggestion. The first Trader Joe's store was opened on August 25, 1967 by founder Joe Coulomb in Pasadena, California. Coulomb started his career at Rexall, a chain of American drug stores. In 1958, he was asked to test the launch of Pronto Markets, a store brand to compete against 7-Eleven. Rexall appointed the 26-year-old Joe Coulomb to head up the new division. His managers were impressed with his performance and believed he could handle the job. After expanding to six Pronto markets in the Los Angeles area, Pronto was experiencing growing profit pressures by the mid-1960s as a result of increased competition by 7-Eleven, which was bearing down on smaller competitors like Pronto. They were even planning an aggressive expansion in Pronto's region. In 1966, Rexall decided to jettison its Pronto Markets division and leave the convenience store industry. Coulomb, still at the helm, was faced with a choice, attempt to buy out of the chain that he had built and remained as chief executive, or bail out and look for a new niche in the retail industry. He decided to stick with Pronto, and with the financial backing of Bank of America, he purchased Pronto from Rexall. Coulomb considered two prevalent social trends as he devised a new marketing scheme. First of all, consumers were becoming increasingly educated and sophisticated, and were expecting more from their shopping experiences. Secondly, the surge in global travel was exposing Americans to new foods. Coulomb decided to develop a food store at which well-educated, well-traveled, but not necessarily wealthy people could buy foods that would impress themselves and their friends. Coulomb got the idea for the Trader Joe's South Seas motif while on vacation in the Caribbean. During the 1960s, the tiki culture craze was still widespread in the United States, so Coulomb modeled his store as a direct nod to the fad. The name Trader Joe's was a spoof on Trader Vic's, the famous tiki-themed restaurant based out of Emeryville, which had opened its first Southern California location in Beverly Hills at the Beverly Hilton in 1955. The prices were notoriously expensive, but rather, Trader Joe's in Pasadena was quite the opposite, providing a less expensive offering of food and drink. The first branded Trader Joe's Market opened on August 25, 1967 at 610 South Arroyo Parkway in Pasadena. Since the beginning, the Hawaiian shirt has been the trademark Trader Joe attire. Store employees, dubbed crew members, sport brightly colored Hawaiian-themed shirts, adding to the friendly, inviting atmosphere and the feeling of adventure in the store. Coulomb rejected traditional convenience store inventory and began to market Trader Joe's as an upscale but value-oriented seller of trendy, hard-to-find beers and wine. The strategy was a success and Trader Joe's maintained its profitability. Trader Joe's continued to sell its inexpensive unique wines and imported cheese and coffees as it had since the early 1970s, but Coulomb gradually began expanding the chain's inventory to include a wide array of singular nuts, pastas, fish, vegetables, and prepared snacks and meals. Coulomb drew on his own travel experiences and fashioned a sort of combination health food shop and liquor store 
During the early 1970s, he ordered unique food items from different parts of the world to attract customers, and he labeled the foods as sprightly, entertaining labels like kiwi from paradise juice and look ma, no refined sugar. Trader Joe's stores experimented with all types of health foods and beverages and generally avoided ma marketing mammoths like Coca-Cola and Budweiser. They began stocking increasing amounts of vitamins, biodegradable products, and health foods. The first Trader Joe's boasted of having the world's largest assortment of alcohol, 100 brands of scotch, 50 brands of bourbon and gin, and 14 types of tequila. Trader Joe's first private label product was granola, and then it has started adding fresh squeezed orange juice, vitamins, nuts, and dried foods, and cheese. At one point, Trader Joe's was the largest U.S. importer of brie. By the late 1970s, Trader Joe's needed new ways to grow profit and stay competitive. It eliminated most household basics and cleaning essentials and focused on food. It also slashed the number of items it carried and moved to largely selling private label items. Creating strong private label offerings to rival national brands will be one of his legacies in the supermarket industry. Coulomb also resisted opening up dozens of new stores. The handful of stores Coulomb did open were in Southern California, which fit the demographic profile he was seeking – teachers, musicians, journalists, and other professionals. In 1979, Coulomb sold Trader Joe's to the family of Theo Albrecht, the owner of the Aldi grocery chain in Europe. Aldi in the United States is separately owned by the family of Theo Albrecht's brother, Carl. Coulomb would stay on as CEO, and Aldi's would take a hands-off approach to Trader Joe's. During the early and mid-1980s, Coulomb continued to perfect Trader Joe's inventory and market position and to slowly grow the California chain. While the average store size increased during the 1970s and 1980s, the average Trader Joe's store was still only about 6,000 square feet by the late 1980s, about half the size of a typical Los Angeles supermarket. Trader Joe's efficiency was partly the result of its cash policy. The company paid cash for all purchases and funded growth internally as well as through the deep-pocketed Albrecht family. Innovative, low-cost advertising was a major money saver as well. Minimizing expenses was the company's unusual purchasing program. The store's own branded items, fresh salsa and unique pastas for example, were supplied by constantly changing set of small, independent contractors. The foods they supplied were often discontinued items that Trader Joe's bought at a discount. Those contractors and other suppliers were found by Trader Joe's own buying team, which traveled throughout America and Europe in search of interesting items and bargains. The result of Coulomb's innovative inventory and pricing strategy was huge profit margins. In 1989, Trader Joe's chalked up an estimated $150 million in sales with its chain of 30 outlets, most of which were in the Los Angeles and San Diego regions. Inventory was broadened to include a variety of wines, nuts, cheeses, dairy products, frozen foods, candies, bakery items, juices, and even dog food. Moreover, Trader Joe's became the largest retailer of pistachio nuts, whole bean coffee, and brie in California, and was among the largest retailers of maple syrup and wild rice, among other distinctions. By 1995, Trader Joe's had grown to 72 outlets in California, Arizona, Oregon, and Washington. In 2001, Trader Joe's outlets were averaging about 8 to 12,000 square feet, which was about more than double the size of some of the original Trader Joe's stores. By 2002, more than 160 stores in 15 states made up the Trader Joe's chain, with sales reaching $1.67 billion. While a typical grocery store may carry 50,000 items, Trader Joe's stocks about 4,000 items, 80% of which bears its own brand names. 
Products include gourmet foods, organic foods, vegetarian foods, frozen foods, imported foods, domestic and imported wine and beer, and alternative food items such as vegan and vegetarian options. By 2020, Trader Joe's had more than 530 stores and an estimated $16.5 billion in sales. That same year, Joe Coulomb passed away at the age of 89. Today, Trader Joe's has 560 stores across 42 states in the United States, with stores being added regularly. Thank you for watching. If you like this content, and if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Thanks.